a look at sports news and in cricket circles, Matt Barcher is a player who needs little introduction. The wicket keeper played nearly 301 days and 147 test matches for South Africa over a 15 year period. Although he's now retired from the game, Barcher has been busy with his charity, Rhinos in Safe Hands, an initiative that is helping in the fight against rhino poaching. Going into bat, but this time for the Rhinos. The record-breaking South Africa wicketkeeper Mark Boucher was forced into retirement a year ago after suffering a serious eye injury. But he's had little time to dwell on that. His energy is now focused on rhino conservation. But with more than 600 rhinos poached last year alone, he faces a real battle. Yeah, we have got problems. Um, I'd like to you know, send a message not to to talk about the problems. Um, you know, you need solutions and, uh, and you need hope for the country and, and for the people of South Africa that, that really enjoy wildlife. The SAB Boucher Conservation Project aims to tackle the poaching issue by setting up a national DNA database for the rhino population. The rhinos are darted from the air. Minutes later, the drug takes effect and the team move in. Holes are drilled into the rhino's horns. DNA is taken for the database and a microchip is inserted. We'll send those samples off to a veterinary clinic in Ondersteput where they will take the DNA and put it onto a database which, which gives us the opportunity to first of all not only uh, sort of count the rhino that are in our country um, but also you know if, if that rhino does unfortunately one day get poached um, and they manage to find the horn somewhere in the world and it can be used in prosecution and it has been working which is which is something great for us. The rhino is marked for future reference. Once the process is completed a wake-up drug is administered. Boucher though would also like to see more done to dispel the myths that surround the rhino horn. The message has to be very clear that you know it's not an aphrodisiac, it's, it can't cure cancer so you know those are the big messages that that have that have to be out there and and spread around the world. It's clear to see Mark's passion for this project and despite the recent spate of poachings he remains confident that projects like this one can make a difference. We need to get the message out to the rest of the world uh, that there is good in, in, in wildlife and, and conservation with regards to a rhino. Um, it is one of our big five. We want to be able to have our kids to be able to you know, see what we have ultimately been able to see. Boucher himself continues to face a battle to keep the sight in his left eye that was punctured by a cricket bell last year. It's been a long and painful path. He's already undergone four operations, but he still has three to go. Despite that, he remains optimistic. You know, I've got a little bit of vision back, uh, albeit blurred, but in, in the same sort of breath, I haven't got a, a lens in the eye, so I can't expect it to be any better. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in good spirits about the whole thing. In the meantime, Boucher remains focused on helping the plight of the rhinos. It could well be his most important innings yet. Dan Williams, CCTV News in the northwest South Africa. To be trucks now and to make a dominated the sprints at the Diamond League Championships in Shanghai. However, Kenyans and Ethiopians made the mark in the 1,500 meters race and women's 5,000 meters race, respectively. Karoyola has the details. <laughs> Shelly Ann Fraser Price is off to a strong start this year. The two time Olympic champion won the 200 in the season opening Diamond League meet last week in Doha, Qatar. In Shanghai, the Jamaican ran 10.93 seconds to beat Blessing Okagbare and defending world champion Carmelita Jeter, who pulled up at the finish with an apparent leg injury. As Belkiprop of Kenya outsprinted Mekonen Gebremedin down the final stretch to win the men's 1,500, lunging across the finish line just 0.4 seconds ahead of the Ethiopian. Ethiopian Genzebe Dibaba outpaced Olympic champion and compatriot Meseret Defar to win the women's 5,000 meters in 14 minutes 45.92 seconds. Chinese youngster Li Jinze was the unexpected winner of the long jump as he leapt out to a world leading 8.34 meters to claim victory. Olympic 400 meter champion Kirani James produced arguably the best performance of the meeting as the 20 year old destroyed the field to win in a world leading 44.02 seconds, the fastest time ever at a Diamond League meeting.
Next up for the Diamond League, it's New York. Carol Oyola, CCTV. Chile Nivoa of France and his youth Gomar of Spain won the women's and men's elite races respectively at the 2013 La Roche ITU Sprint Triathlon African Cup in Morocco on Saturday. Chile Nivoa won with a mark of 1 hour, 7 minutes and 17 seconds, while his youth Gomar successfully defended his men's title with a winning time of 58 minutes 27 seconds. 100 amateurs and 58 professionals from 20 countries took part in the eighth staging of the competition. The competitors had to swim 750 meters, cycle for 20 kilometers, and run for 5,000 meters. The points gained by the competitors during this competition will count for the next Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. And we end it there for now on Africa Live. Thanks for watching. I'm Penina Karibe.